Hello, welcome to Zigma Tech Learning Hub. I will be your instructor for physics. For this class, we are going to be taking our exercises from Exam Guide app. If you don't have the application already installed on your device, I will want you to download the app in order to follow along in this class. Exam Guide is a leading educational app that helps students prepare adequately for various exams like UTME, Post UTME, YEC, GCE, KCPE, IJMB, JUPEP, Kabupedia, BECE. JSCE, NCEE, NACO ETC. You can download the app from www.examguide.com or Google Play Store. Please subscribe to our channel and turn on the notification bell and get updated on new videos. Are you ready for this class? Okay, let's get started. Welcome to physics class on electricity. By the end of this lesson, you should be able to define electric current, define and define and state the types of electric circuit, list electrical components and their symbols, state the arrangement of resistors. When we talk about electricity, we are talking about a charge-related concept. Because when you, in electricity, we have different kinds of electricity. And um, for any electricity, there must be a generator, like what I mean by a cell where the energy is pumped out. And then this energy that is being pumped out is going to drive the component, like the charges in the system. So that is why most times we talk about um, static electricity and current electricity. Like we know, people always talk about current. When we talk about current, we, we are talking about something that is in circulation, something that is moving, like the trending news, that is the current. So when we talk about electricity in total, we are just talking about a charge-related concept. So when it is in motion, we now talk about current electricity. So when we talk about static, that is a different topic, and that is for another day. Now, looking at what you have on the screen, you see that the blue balls is what I'm trying to use to paint the picture of what happens, the charge. And then it's moving from positive to this one. That is the movement of electrons. Even though in this class we may be talking about conventional current, but this is just what happens inside a wire for electric current to be in motion. And you can see that the charges are constantly moving. As far as this battery or this cell is closed. Now, when we talk about electric current, we are talking about the rate of flow of charge along a conductor. That is, the quantity of charge flow past a given point or a given unit in one second is what current is talking about. Now, Q represents the quantity of charge measured in Coulomb and T represents time, and this current is used as I, and it is measured in ampere. So the rate, the speed, when we talk about rate, we are talking about the speed. The speed at which the charges are moving past a given point in a closed circuit or in a conductor. That is what we mean by electric current. But, but people always talk about electric current as a movement of charge, which is also very correct. Now, we have one question here just to tr throw more light on what you have just said about um, electric current. You said that they calculate the quantity of charge flowing through a conductor in a current. If a current of 10 ampere passes through the conductor for 10 seconds. So remember that the quantity of current is given as quantity of charge per time. So we are now saying that one ampere is the one column per one second. That is the quantity of charge of one column in one second. And that is what ampere is all about. But then we now say that uh, we are looking for the quantity which is given as IT, the quantity of electric current is 10 times 10, which is 100 C, that is column, because 
when you talk about this Q in this electrical concept, it is measured in Coulomb, and that is C, mostly capital C. Now, we also have a current of 100 milliampere. When we talk about milli, milli is a prefix which represents 10 raised to the power minus 3, milli. So when we talk about milliampere, we are talking about 100 times 10 raised to the power minus 3 ampere, which is given as 10 raised to the power 2 times 10 raised to the power minus 3 ampere, which is given as 10 raised to the power minus 1 ampere. So it's just 0 0.1 ampere of the current. So that the current is 1 over 10 ampere is equal to, what am I looking for? And the time is 2 minutes. Time is 2 minutes. This is 2 times 60, which is 120 seconds. Because time should be measured in seconds in this case. But then when it is given in, in minutes, you have to convert it to seconds by multiplying it by 60 to be able to convert it in that in that um, unit, SI unit. So I'm looking for the quantity of heat, which is this, all over 120. This will cancel this. So, in seconds. So I have that quantity of charge is given as 12C. Now, when we talk about electric circuit, Electric circuit is the path provided for the flow of electric charge. Now, there are different kinds of electric circuit, but then just the path. Look at this. When this is open, the charge cannot pass through it because it's open. Now, when it's closed, it's closed now, then the charge can now pass through it now. As it's closed, the charge can now pass through. You see that? The charge goes and this lights up and this lights up. But then the way it happens in real life is that all of them are on at the same time, especially in this kind of wire we are going to talk about that. So see another part. This is another part provided. You see the way this one. So irrespective that this part now is broken, it doesn't stop this from still going its way. And these are different, different parts or different kinds of circuits you can use for wiring. So, now, when we talk about components of electric circuit, you know, there are different things you know. You know, science deals with a lot of symbols and concepts. When you see wire, when you talk about wire, it's just a line. Resistor can be given as this one. Sometimes, resistor can be also be written in this format. This is just resistor. Please don't confuse this with fuse. But then, we also have another one, which is light bulb. Sometimes, we use this to represent it. A cell, when we talk about a cell, we have this, such that the longest side is positive and the short side is negative. And that is for a cell. Then the next one is battery. Sometimes you now have this. This is a battery. When we talk about battery, we mean combination of two or more cells we now have a battery. So battery is two cells or more. So this is positive, positive, negative, negative. And this is what battery is used for as a symbol. Now, if we also look at this switch, look at this one. We use this thing to represent off and on. If you also see this, look at this. You know that um, the symbol, the circuit here now, you now see when the circuit is open, look at this now. Okay, let's wait a little for it to come up so that you know what is the switch. Because that is just a symbol. Now look at this, it's open now. You see that it's open. So it cannot pass through. And that's exactly how this is. This is used for representing a switch. Now, Mostly, we talk about different kinds of circuits. 
we talk about different kinds of circuit. Number one we talk about is a closed circuit. Let me just draw a closed circuit. This is a wire. This is a switch, and this is a cell. And this is, now when this is closed, we now say that we have a closed circuit. This is a resistor. We'll talk about what that resistor is. Maybe I can also call it a load, because this may be anything connected. It could be a bulb. So this is a closed circuit. Why? Because there is a generator pushing current, like a conventional current, and this moves in this direction. So this is the way current moves in this direction according to conventional current. So this is called a closed circuit. Now, what do we mean by a closed circuit? A closed circuit is just a pathway provided for the flow of electric charge. It is not open. But when we talk about open circuit, look at what we mean. We mean that the switch will be off. Look at this. Such that when the charges come to this part, they will not see a path to flow, to follow. That is when we now say that it is an open circuit. Then what, what do you mean by a short circuit? When we talk about a short circuit, we are talking about a circuit that does not have any load. For example, this kind of, you clean all this, just a wire, battery, and the circuit is closed, but there is nothing connected. For example, you own your generator, but everything is off in the house, but the generator is on. You say it is called a short circuit because it's not carrying any load. There is nothing connected to the standard circuit. We have a short circuit, and this is what a short circuit is all about. Now, let's talk about resistor arrangement. In resistor arrangement, we have the one we call parallel arrangement, and we have the one we call series arrangement. Let's look at the parallel arrangement. Look at this kind of connection. If you look at this connection now, you realize that this is R1, this is R2, and this is R3. In all these resistors, all the, 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 the wire or the terminal of R1 is connected to this portion. The terminal of R2 is connected to that same place, and the terminal, one terminal of R3 is connected to this place, and then to also this place. That means all the three resistors are sharing two different junctions. In this case, we say that we have a parallel arrangement. So it can be in this format. So you see, this is a kind of circuit such that if I have R1, R2, R3, R4, point A to point B, so all of them put their terminals at two different junctions. So that makes them to be in parallel. I don't want to go too far, but then if it is a parallel circuit like we saw in the other one, you realize that even if any of this wire cuts, it doesn't stop the, the current to start flowing in other ones. And then this potential difference across A and B is the same for all the resistors. I know that during calculation or during problem solving, we see how they apply. So this is called parallel arrangement. Then in parallel arrangement, you also notice that each of the resistors has a different current, different current for each resistor. Now, series arrangement, we have R1, R2, R3 connected on the same path, side by side. There is no two junctions connecting R1, R2, and R3, so that makes them to be in series such that if anything happens to the wire or the bulb, 
or all the load, no one will, will be on. All of them will go off. If anything happens to wire at this point, all these resistors will not function very well. So that is what series arrangement is all about. And in series arrangement, all of them have the same current. The same current flowing through R1 will flow through R2 and will go through R3. So that is series arrangement. Now let's go to what we want to do now is how then do we find the total resistance when it is in parallel resistance or parallel arrangement and when it is in series arrangement. So look at this one now. We have A, B. Look at B. We have two. That is two ohms and two ohms. So how then do you find the total resistance? Because in series, because this is in series, R is going to be equal to R1 plus R2. So the total resistance, I'm going to call it RT, is given as 2 plus 2, and which is 4 ohms. The same thing happens to this C. So this is going to be 4 plus 4, which is going to be 8. So um, let me also do that. This is 4, and this is 4. So the total resistance is going to be 4 plus 4, which is 8 ohms. Because why am I using ohm? This symbol, omega, it is used to represent the SI unit of a resistor. Now, let's look at it in this format, like in parallel, and see what happens. In parallel, Now, this is 4 ohms, and this is 4 ohms. Now, when it is in parallel arrangement, we are using this formula. 1 over RT equals 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2. One, that is 1 over RT is going to be 1 over 4 plus 1 over 4. 1 over RT is going to be 2 over 4. And then RT is going to be 4 over 2, which is 2 ohms. Now, you see what happens. What do you notice? That when they are connected in series, there is so much load on the circuit. But when they are connected in parallel, the load is reduced. That is one of the advantages of connecting in parallel over connecting in series. And even if this wire is off, the current will still flow in here, go through this place, and then go out. But if this wire cuts here at this point, the current cannot flow past this place. Everything, this and this, will not be functioning in the circuit. This is another advantage of parallel arrangement compared to series arrangement. Uh, in other words, we say that when you are connected your, your resistors or your connected resistors in parallel, you, 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 you save a lot of money. But when, you connected, when they are connected in series, you spend a lot of money. These are advantages of parallel connection compared to that of series connection. Also, you also notice that the same current will flow here, but then different current flows in different resistors when they are connected in series and when they are connected in parallel. Now, look at this circuit now. How are we going to be able to find the total, um, the total resistor in this circuit? First, these two are connected in parallel. So I'm going to have 1 over RT is going to be 1 over 2 plus 1 over 3. 1 over RT is going to be 6, 2 
That is 6 into 2 is 3 plus 2. No, I won't use this. LCM of RT 2 and 3 is going to be 6 RT. Then times 1 over RT is equal to 6 RT 1 over 2 plus 6 RT 1 over 3. This we cancel this. We have 6 equal to. This cancel this is 3. So we have 3 RT plus 2. We have 2 RT. So we have that 5 RT is going to be 6. So RT is going to be 6 over 5. So what is this RT I'm talking about? This is just the total resistance. When 2 ohm and 3 ohms, 2 ohms and 3 ohms are connected in parallel between A and B. And that is what this is. So at the end, what am I having? 6 divided by 5, 1.2. So I have 1.2 ohms. Now that I have 1.2 ohms, what happens? Then you are now realize that the two of them have joined together to be 1.2 ohms. And then this is 6 ohm and 2.8 ohm. Then all of them are going to be in parallel to each other. So I'm going to rewrite or um, redraw the circuit for me to be able to capture all the resistors. 1.2. So the resistor is going to be like this. This is 1.2 ohms, and this is 6 ohms, and this is 2.8 ohms. Remember, this is 0 0.2 microfarad. That's not our concern. This is 6 volts. Our concern is this, this, this. How can you be able to find the total resistance in the circuit? Now, let's keep moving. So the next thing I'm going to do now is, if you check very well, 6 ohms, 6 ohms, this is a junction between 6 ohms and 2.8 ohms and also 1.2 ohms. So this one put one of each terminal here. This one put one of each terminal here. 6 ohms also put one of each terminal here. So I'm going to call this place P, junction P. If you also come to this junction, 1.2, let me call this place junction M. 1.2 also put one of each terminal here. Even this one, the terminal connected to this point, and this one, the terminal also connected to this point. So all of them are sharing two junctions between the three of them. Therefore, they are all going to be in parallel. So I'm going to have 1 over R, that is the total resistance, is going to be equal to 1 over 1.2 1 plus 1 over 6 plus 1 over 2.8. 1 over R is going to be equal to, I will just use a um, calculator, 1 divided by 1 1.2, I have 0 0.83. 1 divided 6, 1 point, 0 0.16 plus 1 divided 2.8, 0 0.3. Six, so I'm having one over R is equal to so everything is going to be one point three five ohms. But then that is not the final answer. When I clear the fraction, I'm going to have that R is going to be equal to one over. 1.35. So the total resistance zero point seven four zero ohms. You see, as small as zero point seven is what 
all these resistors, 2, 3, 6, and 2.8 combined together is giving you because they are all connected in parallel to each other. All right, let's finally look at this kind of circuit. How can you be able to find the total resistance in this first one and the total resistance in the second one? I mean circuit. So the first one is going to be 1 over R is going to be 1 over 8 plus 1 over 24. Then you add it to 12. <laughs> so let's just do it this way. 1 over R is equal to 1 divided by 8 is 0 0.125 plus it's, so, it's supposed to find the LCM and clear the fraction. It's, it's, it's okay. But then, if you have your calculator, you can also work 0 0.0416. 0 0.41 to three decimal places. So we have 0 0.125 plus 0 0.041. So we have that 1 over R is given as 0 0.166. So R is going to be 1 over 0 0.166. It's going to be 6.02 ohms. All right, but that's not enough. Remember there is another 12 remaining there. So we're going to have total resistance in the circuit is going to be 6.02 plus 12. So total resistance is going to be 18.02 ohms. That is the, the total resistance on the circuit on the first one. You can also use the same principle to find the total resistance on the second one. Thank you for being part of this class. And before we go, we are going to look for more exercises from Exam Guide app in order to prepare you better for the exam you are going to write. Thank you. Okay, we are in Exam Guide app now. We are going to solve this problem on the topic we just treated. So what we are going to do is, all right, we are going to apply the principle anyways. But uh, the main thing I want us to find out is just the total resistance. But we are going to do all of them together. It said determine the supplied current in the circuit diagram below. So this, 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 this. So this 60 and, uh, okay, this six and three are in parallel. Why these two are in series? These two together with this six will be in parallel. So this is how I'm going to find the total resistance. I'm going to first solve for six ohms, one over six plus one over three is equal to one over RT. So LCM is going to be six. So I'm going to have six, six RT times one over RT. That is total resistance is equal to 6R, let me remove this, just R. So 6R all over 1 over 6 plus 6R multiplied by 1 over 3. So this will cancel this, this will cancel this, and this into this is 2. So half 6 is equal to R plus 2R. So this is 3R equal to 6. R is going to be 6 divided by 3, which is 2 ohms. All right, these six ohms and three ohms are combined to be two ohms at this point. So this two now is going to be six plus four, six plus four, which is going to be six. But then that six and this six are going to be in parallel. So I'm going to solve the two of them in parallel as well. So one over R is equal to one over six plus one over six. Let me call it R, this is R1. Um, let me call this one R2. So the LCM is 6. So have 1 over R2 is going to be 2 over 6, which is 1 over 3. So R2 is, R2 is going to be 3 ohms. So this is 3 ohms. Now, now that I have solved for 
this and this to be 3. And I have solved these two to be 2. Then the two of them are now on the straight line. The total resistance in this case is going to be 2 plus 3, which is 5 ohms. Now that I have 5 ohms, then the, according to Ohm's law, V is equal to IR. And that R there is the, my total resistance. So the voltage is 3. I don't know the current times 5 ohms. So current is going to be 3 over 5, which is 3 divided by 5, which is 0 0.6, and that is option D, 0 0.6 ampere, and that is the current in this circuit. So this is how to do it. Thank you for participating in today's class. You can practice more questions using the ZAM Guide app. The app scores and gives a detailed explanation of all the questions at the end of your practice test. You can learn a particular topic of interest with different modes like study mode, mock mode, and practice mode. It also has other features that makes learning fun. It is a must-have for all serious students. Download from www.examguide.com if you don't have it yet. See you in the next class. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel. Hit the notification bell and share the video to people that will benefit from it. Bye.